Hello, everybody. How are you? Hello. Good. I'm so glad that you guys are here tonight. It's a good-looking crowd tonight. You should just give yourself a high five. That was really awesome that you're here. Well, my name's Chesty, and I'm, uh, again, just so glad that you're here. Inside your bulletin, if you have one, there's a connection card. And so I would like for everybody to fill that out if you would. And if you're a first-time guest, we are so glad that you're here. And we hope that you'll fill that out as well. We're going to do a drawing probably at the end of uh, service tonight. So we want to make sure that your uh, information is there and so that you'll have your name in the pot. So we're glad that, um, glad that you're here to do that. Well, I believe that we're in our fourth week of our series called Tensions. And uh, so tonight we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, obeying our parents versus obeying God. What is the tension between that? Is there any? And what is it that we need to know about these two issues? Um, Brandon said it so well last week or the week before whenever he spoke, I believe, about there being a sweet spot. Sometimes in life uh, we think that there's this or that decision, and there's not just this or that decision. Sometimes there's both. And so tonight we're going to find out what is the tension, what is the sweet spot, where is it that we're to live between obeying God and obeying our parents? I know a lot of you know, some of you may not know, Danny and I, Danny, what about me? My really awesome, studly husband right there. We just adopted a baby boy almost a year ago. Uh, next Monday is going to be awesome to celebrate his birthday. But we are learning what it means to be new parents. Now, of course, you don't remember what it was like when your parents became new parents with you, uh, but I can tell you that it's a challenge, especially as he's getting to be near a year old. He's very curious, and he wants to find what, how everything works and what's in this drawer and what's in this cabinet and let me pull it all out. It's very difficult to keep him from mashing his fingers you would think after one time you remember that if I put my finger in there and close the drawer, it hurts. He doesn't remember that. So he tries uh, us over and over again on that. We say no. He, he crawls toward things, and he turns and looks at us as if to say, can I do this? And we say no. And a lot of times he goes, and of course he does that anyway. He throws his bottle down like Eminem at the end of a concert with his microphone, when he's done with it, and we tried to get him not to do that, but he continues to do that. And so it's just a challenge all over the place. Um, a, a, another thing that he does, uh, which is he, he crawls over to the dog's bowl and looks at us, and we say, no, no. And he looks at us again and then crawls to the dog bowl anyway, puts his hand in the dog bowl, grabs the food out of the dog bowl, and eats it. <laughs> I know, it's, it's really gross, but he does that. So what I'm learning through this is with Drew, if I could teach him to obey me, if, I could, if we could teach him to obey us as parents, then maybe one day he'll learn to obey God. Like one day maybe I'll get to introduce Drew to Jesus or even one of you. One of you could be his, his nursery caregiver or his preschool or kids' place where we have it up here on Sunday mornings, you may be a teacher and you may get the opportunity to introduce Drew to Jesus. And if Drew can find out how to obey us as parents, he might be able later to obey God. So it's not either or. You see what I'm saying? It's not just A or B. It's both. And so we're going to talk about how that works tonight. Listen, even if you aren't a follower of Christ, like maybe you're here tonight just checking it out, and we're so glad you're here. But even if you're just checking this out tonight, this stuff can still help you in life. Like where you're going, where you're headed, in leadership. If you'll apply these principles tonight, you'll get places in life. In the second book of the Bible, does anybody know what that is? Genesis. Does anybody know what's next? Exodus. That's right. Y'all are so smart. In the second book of the Bible, which is Exodus, it's written by Moses. In chapter 20, this is known as the Ten Commandments. How many have heard of the Ten Commandments before? Okay? Alright, thank you. Moses wrote this book 
But as he was leading the people one day, and he led like a million people, as he was leading these people, God called him to go up to a mountain. Away from the million people, called him to go up to the mountain. And he said, Moses, I want, to come, I want you to come up here, I want to talk to you. And so Moses goes up to the mountain, and God gives him the Bible. In those days, the Ten Commandments was the, the extent of the Bible. I just thought of a, your mom is so old joke when I was preparing this, but it's probably not funny to y'all, but I thought it was funny. Can I say it anyway? Yeah. Even though it's not going to be put Y'all laugh. It's not funny. Your mom is so old. When, when she got her first Bible, it had one page. Thank you for the mercy laugh. I appreciate that. Thank, thank you, Emily. So God gave Moses the Ten Commandments. He wrote them in stone. And he said, this is it. And number five, everybody say number five. Number five, number five is Exodus 20, verse 12. This is going to be on your outline inside the bulletin. It's also going to be up here on the, on the screen. And it says this. Honor your father and your mother so that you may, will you read these next two words? Live how? Live how? Live long in the land of the Lord that your God is giving you. So in short, simply put, if I had to narrow this verse down, it says, obey your parents. I want you to fill that in. Will you write that down? Obey your parents. In short, the Bible says, obey your parents. That's what honor your father and your mother mean. Now, you can't argue this. It's not debatable. There's no tension there. It's okay. Your parents. Do what they ask you to do. And if you do, there's a promise. You'll live what? Long. long. If you want to live long, obey your parents. Now, here's something else I want you to write down. Your parents will probably kill you if you don't obey them. Okay, that's why it's in there. Cut your life short. <laughs> Obedience sometimes isn't something we want to do, but if you remember this, remember this, write this down. Obedience now leads to opportunities later. Obedience now leads to opportunities later. Will you please turn to both of your neighbors and tell them, Obedience now leads to opportunity later. All right, in 1 Samuel chapter 16, 1 Samuel chapter 16, there's a man there named, yes, Samuel and David. We're going to talk about David, but Samuel, okay? Samuel has a job. Samuel's job is to go find the next king of Israel. Not a small job. That's a pretty big job. He was told by God, go find, go appoint, go appoint the next king of Israel. And God tells him where to go. I want you to go to a man's house named Jesse. And so he goes to Jesse. Jesse has eight, eight or so sons. Okay? He goes there and he says, Jesse, I'm here. And when you see Samuel come in those days, you're like, whoa, do you come in peace or is this a bad thing? And he's like, no, I come because one of your sons is going to be anointed king. Now, let me set this up for you. This is like the publisher's clearinghouse coming to your door and saying, you win. Okay, this is like winning the lottery. Your life, if you're going to be king, you have everything. You have all this wealth. You have all the security now. Everything in life is set up for you. This is a really cool, cool thing. So he says, line up all your boys. And so Jesse does that. Lines them all up. Samuel walks up to the first one. His name is Iliad. He looks like a king. He's muscular. He's not too young, not too old. He's got to like... A lot, of, you know, a little bit of life experience, but not so old that he could go to war. You know what I'm saying? He's like a warrior king. He looks the part. And so, God, Samuel says, is this the king? And guess what God says? No. I know he looks the part, God says, but God looks at the heart. He goes to the second guy. Is this him? He looks, I mean, he looks pretty good too. He looks the part. He's manly. He's you know, he's muscular and young and all that kind of stuff. No, no, 
No, no, no, no, no. On down the line to the end of the road. No. Samuel's scratching his head. Looks at Jesse and says, hey, is this all you got? He said, well, there's my baby son. He's out in the field tending sheep. Tell him to come in. We'll wait. They have to wait. David comes. And guess what? He's in it. Now, if David had been like some of us, David's out tending sheep. Remember that? Not very flattering of a job. We've talked about this before. Not very flattering. Not something that you want to do every day. It's pretty boring. David's out doing the small things. But if they were like some of us where mom and dad are like, hey, could you please, please help me with the laundry before we go to bed tonight? And I want to. Could you please not do video games before you do your homework? That's really important. Please don't do that. And I, I want to. Please, can you help me this evening with babysitting your little sister, please? It's really important. I get this meeting to go to. I want to. And we give our mom and dad a head about little things in life that we don't want to do. David's out tending sheep, and he gets to be the next king of Israel. You gotta understand this. You gotta understand this. This is so huge. This is so huge. And I'm gonna tell you something that I, I want to do it this way. Let me tell you. Let me tell you this way. I, I've got some people that's gonna help me. Brandon, could you could you come out, please? This is Brandon Keller. He's our student director. Could you give him a hand, please? assist me tonight and he's going to help me help you uh, see how that opportunities and obedience now these opportunities later where's 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 Dylan? Dylan could you come up here please? Would you come on up Dylan. Obedience now. Obedience now. Dylan this is going to represent our foundation of obedience. Okay? This is obedience. This is what I want you to stand on. This is your foundation. If you do the things, you're doing the things that mom and dad tell you to do, doing the things your coach is telling you to do, doing the thing that, that the police officer is telling you to do, you know, Dylan, for this object lesson, you're obedient. Okay? So, Dylan, would you please stand up here on this stool? Are you alright? Yes, sir. We have workers come on, but I don't know if that was possible. Okay. Alright. This is going to represent the student that, you know, kind of what I was talking about, small things just you don't want to do. And so, Brandon's going to help me demonstrate. Go ahead and get our monster tool. I'll let you hold that. Can you hold it? Can you hold it? Okay. So, still let's stand on the foundation here of obedience. And this is going to represent, you know, that I just... I know you said I was supposed to come in at 10. You know, usually my curfew's at 11, but you said 10, but, you know, he's not going to know that I, I didn't get a flat tire or whatever. He's not going to know that, you know, I didn't forget, because usually it's, you know, 11. You know, Coach, I know you said that there's going to be four practices this week, but I only want to do three, because I've got something I really want to do other than practice, so... <laughs> Mom, I know, I know my grades suck. I know they're so bad. I know, I hear you doing this all the time, all the time, in my ear, in my ear. I don't want to study anymore. I don't want to do what I, what I just want to do what I want to do. Can you please, this weekend, this weekend, you know, we got this big thing going on in the house. I really, 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 really need you to stay home. I need some help in the yard. Okay, I need you to do this before. I'll let you go do what you want to do. Mom, I just don't want to. Okay, I'm, just, I'm too tired. I'm 16, but I must have fatigue syndrome or something. I don't know. I just can't do this. <laughs> and so now, we have... <laughs> Now we have this uh, stool of not so much of a firm foundation, 
Yeah, baby. Yeah. Tony, do we have a white shirt on Brandon? Ah! Brandon. Ah! Okay. Because a lot, she said, go ahead, just fall. <laughs> Thank you, Brandon. This, this is what you get with lip. This is what you get when you, you cut the legs of your foundation off from under you when you don't obey. The opportunities that you could have had now look like this. It's wobbly. It's not a firm foundation. It's not here what Dylan's standing on. It's not secure. It could fall at any point. Dylan, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Can we give Dylan a hand? Big things come when people do small things, okay? Big opportunities come when we do the small things. We're tending sheep in the field. We're keeping our baby sister when we don't want to. We're working on our grades when we don't want to. We're doing our best. We're doing what our parents ask us to do. Why? Because that's what God wants us to do. Let's talk a little bit about the other side, okay? John 14, 15 through 17. It's on your outline. It's up here on the, on the board. It says this. This is Jesus talking. And we know that Jesus was God because the Bible tells us that. Okay? Watch this. If you love me, Jesus said, keep my what? And I will ask the Father. He doesn't even stop there. He doesn't say, hey, just do what I say. He doesn't say that. Look what He does say. Keep my commands, but watch this. I will ask the Father, and He will give you another advocate to what? Help you. And be with you forever. The Spirit of truth. Look, Jesus is saying, look, I know it's hard. I know it's hard to obey your parents sometimes. I know it's hard to obey me sometimes. But look, I'm going to send somebody to help you. You don't have to do this by yourself. So in short, the Bible here is saying, obey God. You write that in? Obey God. Now this is not debatable either. It is what it is. So how do these two work together? Where's the tension? Well, obedience of authority is proof that I'm obeying God. Obedience, obedience to your parents, obedience to your teachers, obedience to a police officer, obedience to your principal, obedience to your coach is proof that you're obeying God. They work hand in hand. Now it's easy to obey mom and dad. It's easy to obey people when you're getting your way. It's easy to obey mom and dad when they're handing out money. It's easy to obey mom and dad when you're getting the clothes you want, when you're getting the freedom you want. But when that gets cut off, that's when it gets tough. And that's when you have to make a decision. So write this down. If I have a problem obeying my parents, I don't have a problem with my parents. I have a problem with God. If I have a problem obeying my parents, I don't have a problem with my parents. I have a problem with God. You can't have your Christian life over here and your life over here about authority and have it be separate. It all works together. So when I obey my authority on earth, I'm obeying my authority in heaven. Now you, you, you may think it's boring. You may think it's lame. Again, this is what you get. When we don't obey, this is what we get. A foundation that's not firm. A foundation that's not stable. The opportunities that we could have had down the road aren't afforded to us anymore because we've cut the legs out from under us. I hope that you'll choose to stand on the firm foundation. Now, I know that some of you, listen, I'm not naive enough to think that everybody lives in a picture-perfect family. And that sometimes, as you're coming to youth group, and maybe you're trying to follow Jesus, and you're trying to get your life in line with what God wants you to do, sometimes you look back at your family and you go, oh, they're not so perfect. 
And I can tell you here today, I am not perfect. I will be the first in line. I contradict myself sometimes. I want to do good, and I don't do it, and I don't do it, and I want to. It's, it's this thing that we'll all live with until one day we go to heaven and we're all perfect like Jesus. But I'm not naive enough to, to know and to think that everybody's life is perfect. And, and some of you, you may be living in tough situations where mom and dad are making some really bad decisions. Maybe there's a lot of fighting going on. I mean, like over the top. Maybe there's there's things involved that you wish weren't. And sometimes it's difficult to obey in those situations when you know you're trying to do the right things and mom and dad are just on a totally different plane. And I get that. And I acknowledge that tonight. But I, I want to show you this verse that I think speaks to this somewhat. It's Ephesians 6, 1-3. And it says this, Children, obey your parents. Will you underline, or is it already underlined in the Lord? Circle it. <laughs> For this is right. Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment, with a promise, so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy a long life on the earth. This is what I want to say to you tonight. When you obey mom and dad, no matter what kind of situation you're, they're in or you're in, you're doing it for the Lord. You're doing it for Him. It's not, and I want to tell you, God takes note of that. God takes note of that. And so this is what I want you to go home with. And I want you to write this in. My job is to be obedient. God's job is to be faithful. My job is to be obedient. God's job is to be faithful. When you do what God wants you to do, then you are doing the right thing. Listen, sometimes we even get, um, you know, I realize my shoes are tied, so if you're looking at it, I, I acknowledge that. So I want to tie it so bad, and I'm not going to do, do that right now. <laughs> I understand that, you know, sometimes even mom and dad, they kind of pressure you into doing, not bad things, but just maybe things that you don't feel your life is headed to. Like some of you, you know, you may feel like uh, you're about to go to school, college, go off to school, and maybe they're pressuring you to go where they went, and you don't feel like God wants you to do that. Maybe they want you to date this person, and you don't really want to feel like that's the right person for you to date, or, or opposite. Hey, I even have opinions for your life of, you know, what I'd like for you to do. But here's the point. When we're obedient to God, God is faithful. If we'll just do what God wants us to do, everything else will come, everything else will come out in the wash. Everything else will work out. And that's okay. When I'm obedient, God is faithful. I want to close with this story. There was a, um, a captain. And he was manning a battleship. It's a very dense black fog. I mean, it's the darkest of night, and the fog is so thick you can't see anything, and his light's as bright as it can be. And all of a sudden, he sees through the dense fog a, a light coming back toward him. And as he's watching this, he's getting uh, really nervous because it looks like a ship is headed right for him, and not sure why they're not diverting. And, and so he gets on the radio, and he says, this is Captain Smith. Please alter your course 10 degrees south. Over. A few seconds go by and all of a sudden the crackling of the radio comes back. This is Private Johnson. Please alter your course 10 degrees south. Over. Well, this captain all of a sudden is saying, you know, I can't believe this private is telling me what to do. He, he must have not understood what I'm saying. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. He gets back on the radio and he says, this is Captain Smith. I ordered you to alter your course 10 degrees south. A few seconds pass by and the radio crackers again. The man comes back on and he says, with all due respect, Captain, this is Private Johnson. Please alter your course 10 degrees north. 
Well, at this point, the captain's furious. He can't believe the audacity of this kid to tell him what to do and not to do what he says. And he said, so he gets back on the radio and he says, Brian, I can have you court martialed. On the authority of the United States, I command you to alter your course 10 degrees south. Crackling of the radio, the private comes back on. He says, Captain, again, with all due respect, I ask you to alter your course 10 degrees. I'm a lighthouse. That's funny, but you know what we do? We try to make God change to fit us so many times. God is that lighthouse. God is faithful. He has rules and He has things set in place to make our life good. And we want to alter it. We want to change it. And He says if you'll just be obedient, there's opportunities you can never imagine. Don't miss them. Don't miss an opportunity just because you didn't want to do the small things. Obedience in small things leads to huge responsibility and large opportunities. Don't miss it. There's a connection card inside your bulletin again. Would you turn it over and take it out? There's a few decisions I want you to consider tonight. Tonight, if you say, Chesney, you know, that house like you were talking about, I kind of live in that. Or you know what? My world doesn't look very good right now because I'm not following Jesus. And I want to do that tonight. And so if you plan to pray that prayer with me, if you will do that, would you just go ahead and mark that on your card? Keep your eyes on your own card. Don't look at anybody else's card. You just mark it. I'm not going to ask you to stand up. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. I'm not going to ask you to come up here. I'm just going to ask you to pray right where you're at to yourself, not even out loud. Just mark that card, though. Tonight, I want to be a follower of Jesus. I need something guiding me in my life. I need God. For the rest of us, Will you check that next box that says, to the best of my ability, I'm not going to be perfect, I get that. To the best of my ability, I'm going to obey God. I'm going to do my best. Pray for me that I will obey God to the best of my ability. And thirdly, pray for me that I will obey my parents to the best of my ability. Some of you, your hand's shaking, even checking that box. You don't want to do it. <laughs> It means you might have to. You don't want to do it. Come on, do it. Do it in faith. I challenge you to do it. Check that box. Let's pray. God, tonight, I thank you for this group of wonderful teenagers, the students that are here tonight. God, so many of them love you, and so many of them are just checking it out tonight. And I ask you tonight that if there be anyone here that doesn't know you, they don't have that relationship with you, they don't know you enough so that they can know what their next steps are. They want a good life and they need you to direct them. And so tonight they're asking you, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Save me from the sins, the wrong that I've done. I'm tired of this way. I want to do what's right. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for me, for my sins, for making a way that one day I can spend eternity with you in heaven. Jesus, please, come into my life. If you prayed that prayer right now, you just did. God, there's others here tonight. They have they struggle obeying your word. They struggle obeying their parents. I ask you tonight, give them courage. Courage to do the right things, to obey and knowing it leads to larger opportunities. Just like David. One day they may look back and they're king. And it's because they did the small things. You gave them greatness. God, we thank you. We thank you for your love for us, that even when we mess up, you love us. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.